call us. So I just want to encourage the people on the call. Uh, let's learn from Betty uh, and, uh, and Pascal. Uh, get a pen and paper, get a, an exercise book somewhere where you can take notes. Uh, we are here to, to train you, to help you develop into a leader. And uh, by taking notes and keeping those notes, when you have your team, you can do your own Zoom meeting and you can be able to download what you have learned from this session. So without further ado, I just want to welcome uh, Betty and Pascal Olo uh, to take us through the session. Betty and Pascal, thank you. Thanks, Fred. I think I'll go fast. Hi, everyone. Good to be with you once again on this Thursday evening as usual. I hope that uh, the day finds you well and uh, working away at your business, making the world a happier and healthier place. And I hope that these evening sessions are going to contribute to that work. Uh, today, I, my session is going to be about something which we hear being talked about very frequently, and that is stress. And uh, this is part of our ongoing series on self-care because uh, you remember we say that we are the window of our business. Each and every one of us is the first thing that a person sees of new life. And therefore so taking care of ourselves is very important. And also it is from knowing how to take care of ourselves that we learn how to take care of our team and our distributors, as well as our clients, uh, our customers. So today I want to talk to, uh, a little bit about uh, stress. Although if uh, for those of us who are not very new, you'll remember we mentioned it a little bit when we were talking about rest and relaxation and the importance of rest and sleep in our good health. So we'll delve a little bit further into it because we just touched on it at that time. So the first thing I wanted to say is that uh, we cannot eliminate all stress from our life. And in fact, we should not because our reactions to stress has got an important role to play in our survival. And human beings have evolved having the ability to deal very effectively with temporary stress. So for example, in, um, in the earlier parts of our lives, let's say in the days of our great grandparents and before, if there was a, a wild animal attacking a village, it was important to, have, to be able to react and act very quickly so as to ensure minimum damage to the members of the village. So in that case, the stress, was, uh, the stress reaction was useful for survival. Even in our life today, let us say for example, a young husband uh, has got a pregnant wife who goes into labor in the middle of the night. When she wakes him up to take, him, to take her to hospital, of course, there's going to be a stress reaction. But the stress reaction is what makes him able to quickly think about the fastest route, way, route or way to get to hospital, where to get the bag, which, uh, which maybe mama had uh, prepared for, for the day she goes into labor and so on. If uh, something happens, uh, let's say there is an attack on us, we are able as a result of this uh, stress reaction to deal with it successfully in many cases, or at least to find something to do that will help. So stress itself is not a problem because it plays an essential role in our, our survival and our dealing with uh, what life throws at us. However, the, the, the stress that is problematic is what is called chronic stress. So chronic stress is a bit different and I will come to describe it just now. What we, we, we need to understand is that chronic stress is a little bit different from temporary stress. When we, the body is reacting to, to stress, what it does is produce certain hormones. For example, there's a hormone called adrenaline which prepares the body to fight or to run or to freeze. So those are the three things that uh, adrenaline pre prepares us for. Another stress hormone is cortisol. So these, these uh, stress hormones have the purpose of protection and rapid reaction. So for example, what they will do is uh, increase the rate of heartbeat, increase the rate of breathing. They'll, the liver will produce a surge of glucose into the blood and uh, the flow of blood to our muscles will increase. 
and so on. And these have the purpose of helping us to cope with the emergency. So it helps us to be able to move quickly, to be able to, you have heard of instances, for example, where a, 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 a tree fell on someone and the person who was with them was able to lift up the tree, which they would normally not be able to lift because of the surge of these stress hormones. So they help us to, to respond to emergency. And in many cases, they are essential for, the, for alleviating the danger. But the problematic stress, the one we call chronic stress, is a response to an ongoing emotional pressure, which a person feels powerless to affect. So you, you, you are responding to something which is causing you a high degree of discomfort or stress, but you feel you are unable to do anything. Now, if you compare that with what I've been saying, that the, 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 our stress, response to stress should be action, speed, and, uh, and uh, high, a high, a high alertness, if you feel that you can do nothing about your situation, then the stress hormones are there, but they, are not, they can't bring about the action that is required to remove the stress. And if this is going on for a long time, that is what we call chronic stress. So these hormones that uh, normally will help us to react uh, successfully to emergencies are supposed to then dissipate from the body, reduce from the body and disappear from the body once the emergency is over. But you see, if the emergency doesn't end, we keep on having this stress situation going on, then we keep on having these hormones and the effects they have on the body now becomes harmful instead of helpful because they were supposed to come, do their job and then disappear. But now they are there the whole time and they are not able to actually produce the, to go about producing the action that is uh, helping to remove the stress. So what are some of the main sources of uh, chronic stress? Uh, there are many of them, of course, as, as many and as different as uh, human beings are many and different, but uh, four of the main areas which lead to chronic stress are financial difficulties, let us say we have financial obligations which we are struggling to, to fulfill and we keep on seeing that the, the, the pressure is increasing but everything we are doing is not really working. So we end up having this being in continuous high alert but at the same time we are frustrated in not having any effect on the, the stressor. The other one, after financial difficulties, we also have problems at work. Let us say in our work situation, we have a difficulty, for example, a difficult boss or a, a, a highly stressful type of work. This can lead to chronic stress as well. So the third thing that commonly causes chronic stress is family problems. For example, if there is problems with the marriage and there's a threat of divorce, or if there is abuse, and uh, things like that, then that can be a, a source of chronic stress. And then the other one is health problems. So for example, you may find that maybe you are having a certain uh, symptom and you think it is just temporary, then maybe you are diagnosed and you find that it is something serious. Then of course you start having stress because you are realizing that this is a big problem and you don't know how you are going to resolve it. So uh, those are four, but uh, as I've said, there are many other sources of chronic stress, but you can see that uh, the common denominator among them is the feeling of helpless that accompanies chronic stress. The feeling that you are not able to actually resolve the stress or remove the stress. So what are some of the effects of chronic stress? And the reason why I think this uh, topic of stress is important is uh, where in all the sessions that we've been doing in this self-care series, we have seen that quite a number of the, the lifestyle related problems are made worse by stress. Okay, so if you think about uh, many of the lifestyle conditions that we have been speaking about over the last months, almost all of them are worsened by chronic stress. So uh, number one that I wanted to mention is that stress hormones speed up breathing. This we say the, the hormones 
speed up breathing so that we can uh, act quickly. But if you already have a breathing problem, let us say asthma or emphysema, then of course it's going to be worse. And probably if you have experience for someone who has got asthma, if they have stress, then the breathing difficulties just become worse. So you can see that in such a case, the chronic stress is worsening a pre-existing condition. Another one is uh, stress hormones speed up heartbeats and cause the blood vessels to constrict, that is to grow narrower, that is another effect. Of course, it is, if, if the stress is temporary, the way it's supposed to be, then once the stressor is out of the way, then everything goes back to normal. But if it is chronic, it means that the heart is always working too hard and the blood vessels are always too narrow. And that, if it's prolonged, can contribute to things like high blood pressure, they can contribute to stroke and heart failure. So this, this can contribute to such problems, especially if already we had other underlying, these problems were already underlying. If stress is added onto them, then of course you can see that it makes it worse by cause, causing the heart to work even harder. If we already were not heart healthy, or uh, if we already had high blood pressure, then it means the high blood pressure can go out of control altogether. Then another thing we mentioned is that there's the stress hormones also cause the liver to cause a, bring a surge of glucose into the blood. Glucose, we know, is the fuel which our muscles are going to use for working. And if I'm going to move very quickly, then this surge of glucose is very useful. But if in chronic stress, I can't do anything, the surge of glucose simply flows around in the blood, not really doing anything. I might be very tense, but I can't act because let us say my boss is shouting at me and I'm feeling very agitated, but I can't do anything. I have to sit and listen and the stress hormone and its effect is just flooding in my body. And uh, if this is a chronic situation, then it can contribute to type two diabetes or because sometimes the body might not be able to deal with that surge of glucose in the blood. And that is how we, we with time and uh, the chronic stress can uh, contribute to our developing, uh, developing type two diabetes. Remember I'm saying contributing, not causing. So there are other factors that play a role. Another thing can that can happen is that it can lead to chronic tiredness. Because if we are not using the, 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 the surge of glucose and the body is struggling to try to control the glucose in the blood, in the end, the glucose does not serve the purpose for which it was meant to be serving as a, as a fuel. And also because we are not able to act so that the, the glucose uh, arriving in the muscles is uh, fueling muscle action, All right? Then another area where chronic stress can uh, affect us is in the immune system, because we mentioned some time ago that the immune system has the responsibility of protecting the body from infections. And during temporary stress, it does this work by preventing especially opportunistic infections like let us say candida or common cold and so on. But if it is chronic that it's going on the whole time, then what is going to happen is that the immune system now comes from being vigilant and becomes weakened. And then you will find that uh, these infections become even more common. And maybe you have noticed that if you have had a very stressful experience, let us say, uh, like let's say you are a parent, an aged parent was sick and you are looking after them and uh, you are very occupied with looking after the loved one, then maybe the loved one passes away. Afterwards is when you'll find that you start getting flu, you start getting uh, upset stomach, you start getting all these uh, infections attacking you because now the, your immune system has been degraded, degraded as a result of being on high alert for a prolonged period. So the chronic stress can also weaken our immune system over time because it demands too much for too long. Then chronic stress also, and this I think is, might be a common experience, can interfere with our digestive system. So if we are tense and uh, stressed, we find that we can have uh, an irritable bowel so that sometimes we have constipation, sometimes it becomes diarrhea, sometimes it is heartburn, sometimes it is nausea. 
All this shows that the chronic stress is upsetting our digestive system. Um, of course, another area also where we can uh, notice problems with chronic stress is in mental health. And here we can, uh, as a result of the prolonged stress, you can find that a person becomes depressed or anxious. The depression can be because of the feelings of helplessness. Let us say, for example, your financial problems are just escalating and escalating and you are postponing joining the new life opportunity because your auntie told you it will not work. And uh, so you are here trying to make ends meet and it's not happening. In the end, it can lead to feelings of depression or even anxiety. And uh, of course, from depression and anxiety, it can, we can go further down the line and we have other problems like overeating or not eating. So some people, when they are stressed, they eat too much especially of the wrong foods. Others, they become so anxious that they cannot eat. And of course, it leads to malnourishment. And um, others can opt for abuse of substances like alcohol or other things, or uh, pain medication. Others might avoid social situations, so they become reclusive and they avoid being with, with people. So those are some of the ways in which chronic stress can lead to or worsen ment uh, mental health problems. And then uh, another one, maybe the final one, uh, an example of uh, the effect of chronic stress is interfering with the reproductive hormones. So for example, sh short-term stress can cause an increase in men of the hormone testosterone. But if the stress is prolonged and chronic, then there is going to be a reduction in testosterone and a growing lack of interest in sexual intimacy. The same will apply to ladies that if they are stressed and anxious, then there will be a lack of interest in sexual intimacy as well. So this, this list of things, of course, is not everything, but you can see that chronic stress can have a bad effect on almost any aspect of our bodily systems. And for that reason, I think it tells us, we, we can uh, conclude that it is important to make uh, stress, stress resolution an important part of our self-care. And as I said, we cannot eliminate all stress, but we can try to resolve as much of it as possible so that it is not just an accepted part of our life. Because I think from what I've said, you can see that it will not, we will not stand in one place, things will get worse and worse. Therefore, it means that it is important that we make an effort to resolve the stressful situation. So if you look, we look at the Neolife contribution to helping us with stress resolving, we have got three products that I can recommend. The first is Aloe Vera Plus, which is helpful as a, ton, a drink that uh, helps uh, to calm the digestive system and also helps in um, dealing in some cases with things like nausea, stomach upsets, and also AIDS relaxation. Uh, another, another one which is not available in all markets, but if it's available in your market, then herbal rest and relax is a useful uh, supplement, herbal supplement for helping to to enhance our ability to rest and relax because when we are resting and relaxing then some of these stress hormones can leave our body and uh, our body will have time to recover and the third one is vitamin b complex which plays an important role in many systems of the body including uh, the provision of energy and, uh, and other things, quite a number, if you read about vitamin B, you will see that it plays many roles in many systems. So it, uh, it's an important supplement to take in dealing with stress. Uh, on the personal lifestyle side, what can we do to help us to resolve stress? The first one is uh, we might need to make a change. So for example, if the source of, the, the source of chronic stress is your job, then you might need to work harder at your new life business so as to be able to fire your boss, as we say in the business. Or you might need to change your friends because sometimes a source of stress are friends that we have, maybe they are very negative 
and are always shooting down all our good ideas or any ideas we may put forward, or they are always looking at the negative side of life. So we might need to change the people with whom we spend the maximum uh, amount of our time if they are part of the stress. The other thing is uh, being able to say no, because sometimes we feel that if we, if we, wa we don't want to do something or something is not a good suggestion for us, we feel that people will think badly of us if we say, no, this is not for me, or no, I will not do that, or no, I do not need that. But we need to be prepared to say no, because if you think about it, quite a bit of our stress comes, our chronic stress comes from saying yes, when actually the answer is no. So we need to be free to think about what we really want and whether something is right for us. It does not mean we should just say no about anything and everything. It means that sometimes the answer is no. And in a, a good relationship and a, a true friendship, we should be free to say no when the answer is no, rather than to say yes. And meanwhile, we feel angry and resentful inside because we really wanted to say no, but instead we felt pushed into saying yes. Then another thing that can help in stress resolution, because as we said, we can't, sometimes it's not within our power to change our, our job or, uh, or to say no, but uh, something that we, we can do is increase our level of activity or exercise. This helps to dissipate some of these stress hormones and their effects. Remember we said one of the effects is to a surge of sugar in the muscles and, um, uh, increase in heart rate. If we, uh, we start an exercise program or increase our activity, so it might be not necessarily mean that we join a gym. It could be that we take up walking sometimes or we take up some form of exercise that we like cycling and so on. This will help our body to dissipate some of the effects of stress. And then whenever possible and wherever possible, of course, we should work towards removing the stressors whatever they may be, if it's an illness, which is related to our lifestyle, for example, then we should make the effort to change our lifestyle, to use a supplement that we need to use so that we remove a health challenge if it's something that can be done. Then uh, there is also a list of many pleasant things that sometimes we get too busy to do. So I, I am also guilty of this, that there are some things which I like to do, but uh, when I become preoccupied with uh, life things, then I find that I don't do them at all. Some people like to listen to music. Some people like have got hobbies that they enjoy. Some people can uh, enjoy singing in a choir, but uh, sometimes we allow ourselves to push all the pleasant things that we can add into our lives and just focusing on all the stressful things that we have. So another way of resolving stress is adding to the pleasant things of life. It could be spending time with our family members whose company we enjoy and so on. It can be taking up a hobby, something maybe that we used to like and that has fallen by the wayside because we somehow did not create time for it. So th that, that is what I wanted to say for my session on stress. I hope it has been uh, helpful. Uh, I see my time is up, so I'll just answer two questions which uh, I got. The first one, someone asked about irritable bowel syndrome, which we even mentioned just now about uh, some of the things that are made worse by stress. And uh, the, the supplements that we recommend for irritable bowel syndrome is uh, herbal digestive complex, if you have it in your market. Aloe vera plus is also, also helpful. Fiber tablets is helpful for the irritable bowel syndrome. And also if you have acidophilus, it's quite helpful. If you don't have acidophilus, we can also recommend omega-3 salmon oil. Then uh, for irritable bowel syndrome, some of the, the lifestyle changes that you can make is eat uh, a healthy diet rich in soluble fiber. Soluble fiber will be found in certain kinds of fruits and vegetables. So you maybe would need to cook or steam the vegetables so that they are not too rough on the digestive system. Avoid fizzy drinks like sodas, avoid alcohol and processed foods. 
And for some people, dairy products can also be a trigger for the irritable bowel syndrome. So those are some of the, the recommendations for irritable bowel syndrome. And then someone asked an interesting question about a supplement that is getting a lot of attention, especially on the internet, and this is collagen. I don't know if you have heard about all these collagen supplements that are coming about. So the person wanted to know if uh, Neolife has got a collagen uh, supplement. And I wanted to say we don't have this because I think there is uh, a need for clarification Collagen is a protein and all proteins are made of amino acids. So uh, collagen is sort of like a connective tissue, like you will find it in uh, cartilage of bones and you'll find it in membranes and di different tissues in the body will have different types of collagen. So uh, since it is a protein, it means that it is made of amino acids. And any protein that we take has got to be broken down into its component amino acids and then rebuilt into our tissues, which means if I get collagen from, let's say, uh, bones, bone soup, it will, I will not absorb it as collagen. It is first going to be digested and broken down into amino acids. And then it is those amino acids that my body is going to use to build collagen. Therefore, the, the reason why Neolife does not have a collagen supplement is that we've got an excellent NutriShake or Neolife shake or protein, uh, uh, sports protein shake, which has got all the amino acids that we need to build up all the tissues that we want. So for that reason, it, it, it would not make sense for Neolife to have just a collagen supplement because any collagen that we take is sort of like uh, eating meat. When we eat chicken, we don't absorb the chicken. We break down the chicken and then the amino acids that come out of a chicken is what we use for building our tissues. So the same case with collagen, the same case with our NutriShake or Neolife Shake. And the good thing about the Neolife Shake that is better than collagen is that collagen has, has got around 16 to 18 amino acids, but Neolife Shake has got the full number, the 22 amino acids, which we need to get from our diet. So by taking our Neolife uh, shake or our Nutri shake or our uh, sports protein shake, we get all the amino acids that we need to build up the tissues that whether it is muscles for those who want to body build, or it is for repairing our bodies or for healing from illness and so on. We get all that we need from our, our protein drinks and that is why Neolife does not have a collagen supplement because what we have already does all the job that you need. And even if you buy a collagen supplement, you will simply eat, drink it and then it will be broken down into amino acids, which are the ones that are going to be used to build up. So you don't absorb the actual collagen. Okay, so I hope that is a, an adequate answer for the person who has that question. And I think I am stealing Pascal's time now. So I'm going to say goodbye and hand you over to him. At the same time, wishing you a very good month. And I think that I would like to also remember those of us. I know that uh, some of our, our leaders have lost quite a number of distributors in their teams. And I think our dear Paul has also lost uh, a friend. So let us keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers as they go through this time of bereavement and pray that they are going to be healed. And we pray also for the, the departed ones that uh, one day we'll meet them again. I want to wish you a good evening and let me hand you over to Pascal now who is raring to tell you all about how to make your next step and build a great team. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, Betty. Uh, I can see there are many people clapping their hands there. We really appreciate for your for your the time you take to come and learn with us because we all learn from one another in this business. There is nobody who can say that they have been in the business long enough and uh, they know everything. So we're all here to come and learn from each other. So what I want to share with you today is two things how to master the basics, and two, how to build genuine friendship. Mastering the basics simply means that you know the basics so well that if I wake you up at three o'clock in the morning, you'd be able to tell what the four basics are. That is what mastery is. 
And um, if you allow me, let me share the screen with you. Um, just give me one moment, please. All right, so um, let me put it on the slideshow. Okay. What I'd like to discuss with you is, is how, to, how to master the basics because our business is built by doing the basic things all over again. Um, the other day I was listening to Charlie Bolton. Charlie Bolton has been in the business for 46 years, going on 47. And he's a, he's a top distributor in Yale worldwide. Charlie still does the basics and the basics are talking to people. Let's go back to something that uh, I, I was listening to an audio about um, how to be, how to develop good habits. What we practice grows stronger. So everything that we do consistently every single day grows stronger in us. If, if we do call reluctance, that grows stronger. For those of you who are distributors, you know what call reluctance is. Call reluctance is in the morning you wake up, you take a list of 10 people and you look at your phone and suddenly your phone is very heavy, you're reluctant to make a call. That is what we mean by call reluctance. If you want to succeed in this business, you have to practice the things that are required for you to succeed in the business, that is talking to people. So remember this always, what we practice grows stronger. If you practice goodness, you grow stronger in it. If you practice uh, uh, moderation, you grow stronger. If you practice enthusiasm, it grows stronger in you. So always remember that what you practice grows stronger. Now, what is really our business? Our business is new life, is moving the products from new life to, to different users, ourselves and customers. That is really what we do. New Life pays you no money until a product is moved from the company to different users. That is why New Life uh, pays you income. But how do we do this? We do the business by making use of three natural laws that every farmer knows about. You see, I find it strange that instinctively farmers know that if they are going to harvest, they need to plant, they need to sow in order for them to reap. Number two, a farmer knows that if he plants one seed, he doesn't hope to get one seed back. He's hoping to get increasing returns. He's hoping to get a bag, a bushel, 10 bags, 20 bags. Number three, a farmer knows that if he plants a seed today, he doesn't have it in the evening. He has to wait for a growing season. It's called delayed gratification. These basic three laws are the laws that we need to apply in our business. Okay, sowing and dripping in our business is simply talking to people. Increasing returns means if we talk to people who join the business, those people talk to other people. And those other people talk to other people. That is what we mean by increasing returns. And delayed gratification means that we have to wait for a growing season. When you start the business, you can't be a director in the first month. It takes time. You can be a director in the second month or third month but it takes time to be at the directors. So these are the three habits or the three laws that we need to use to build our business. But what do we need to focus on to become successful? What are these things we need to practice every day so that it grows stronger in us? The first, we need to use products, okay? If we don't use products, our business will not grow. It's just as simple as that. And using products means you don't, you don't need to use the whole range of products you need to use the products that you need. Do not buy products that you don't need. Buy products that you need to use. The second thing you need to do is you need to share the business, okay? How do you share the business? Doing the four basic things. Name list, invite, show the plan to those who are interested, and follow up to close. Now, let me go, go, let me go to name list. How do you build our name list? What I find is sometimes this is, um, let me backtrack a bit on my thought process so that I can explain this as best as I, uh, I know how. I was reading, uh, I was listening to somebody called James Clear. James Clear is an expert in creating habits for success. 
and they did an, an experiment, they, they did uh, some, some uh, research and they took three sets of people. The one set of, of, of people, they told them what to do in terms of the exercise, okay? They are told you need to exercise for at least half an hour to 45 minutes. The second group of people are told to exercise, but accompanied with the exercise is they were listening to motivational tapes. The third group of people were, listen, were told what to do. They listened to motiva motivational tapes and they wrote down what they were going to do. The first two categories, there was only 30% 30, 30 effectiveness. It means 70% of the people gave up after two weeks. But the ones who had motivation, knew what to do and actually wrote down a plan, 90% of them stuck to their daily habits. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this, you need to write names of your people down. Write names of, 20, of the 100 people or more. And I would suggest if you're new in this business, if you're just starting the business, don't go to sleep tonight if you, don't, if you haven't written down 20 names. And when you finish writing these 20 names, pick up a, a phone, make an appointment with your sponsor so that they can help you to go through that list. All right? The next, step you, the, the next thing you need to do, you need to learn how to invite. How do you invite effectively? You need to invite by asking the right questions. You see, I found that this business grows fast if you show the plan to people who are interested, okay? That's why we, we, we say that build business with people who are interested in building the business. Build with the willing. So how do you know what questions to ask? Very simple. Ask the person what they do, how their life situation is, uh, what is their income needs? Do they have uh, health challenges? Are they having challenges at their work? You ask this question so that the answer you get will reveal to you if this person actually needs the business or wants the business. Because remember, if you, spot, if you force somebody to join the business, you'll have to force them to build the business. And that's not what we do. We show the plan to people who are interested in joining the business. And the last thing is to do the follow-up. Follow-up simply means if I show you the plan on Monday, on, Ma on Tuesday morning, I call you to follow up and ask you what your decision is. If you tell me you, you're still thinking about it, I will call you on Thursday. If on Thursday I call you, you say you're thinking about it, I will ask you a simple question. Is there anything I can help you to think through this decision process? What is really holding you back? Is it money? Is it time? If it's time, all of us have 24 hours a day, we just need to prioritize. If it's money and you don't have it, take a list, take a piece of paper, write down a list of 10 pe people you know, borrow $100 from each of them, by the end of that day, you should have $1,000. In fact, $100 is a lot of money. Just ask them to, for $10. Ask $10 from each of your 10 friends. By the end of the day, you'll have raised more than $100 and start your business, okay? The third success, the other success habits we need to have is product retailing. What does that mean? It means that some people are not actually interested in the business, they just want to use the products. And you as a, as a distributor, you need to know this very clearly that some people may not be interested in the business. They just want to use the products. And these people will give you a, a small profit because remember, the goal of our business is to get the products from near life to different users. Some of them as customers, some of them as distributors. And the larger pool of people you have using the products, the more money you're going to earn. The other success habits you need to have is personal development, reading of positive books every single day. You know, when you're reading these books, you may, you may not realize that you are growing, but you are. Because you're putting positive information in your mind, you're putting positive information in your soul, and it is going to reflect when you talk. You see, you can speak to somebody for five minutes and you can tell this person is really uh, sure about where they are going or this person has no clue where they are going. And personal development means you read something every single day. 
The last thing about being a master of the basics is write down your weekly plans. I would recommend to you, uh, whatever your habits are, select a one day in the week, spend two hours or three hours planning your next week so that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you know the prospects you're going to speak to, you, you have gone through your mind what you're going to, the questions you're going to ask, you know which ones you're going to speak to, if they are going to be customers or distributors. So writing down your plans, weekly plans is very, very critical because it gives you an idea on how effective you are. I did the business for a very, very long time without realizing the, the, the um, urgent necessity of writing down what I do. I think about, two, uh, about a year or two ago is when I started actually documenting what I am doing to actually monitor the effectiveness of the work I do. And I found that when I write down what I do, it gives me time to reflect, to ask myself, could I have said what I say to this prospect in a different way? Could I have asked a better question? Could I have asked them something better so that they can give me a very good idea on whether they're a good prospect or not? So take time to ask the right questions. So remember about mastery of the basics. What we practice grow stronger. And what are the basics of our business? Using the products, sharing the business with people, that is building a name list, inviting by asking the right questions for them to see the business, showing them the plan to those who are interested and following up to close, and then retailing products. If you master these things, our business will grow. The last thing I'd like to share with you is something quite, um, you know, during, after, training and during the week, I do a lot of reading, I do a lot of thinking. Um, and I found that one of the very important things to build a long lasting business is to build genuine friendship with people. And you know, sometimes, well, I'm sure all of you, I think in this meeting, we are, are about 400 people attending this session. And each of you who are attending this session, I'd like you to ask yourself, just count the number of people who you say are your genuine friends. Count them. And on a scale to five, five if you say this person I can rely on, and one, this person I cannot rely on. Write down the names of five people whom you can say are your genuine friends. And I'll give you a few ideas to, uh, because these are some, some things that are not easy to define. What is an acquaintance? An acquaintance is a person who knows my name. I have met him before. What is a companion? A companion is a person who knows my name and my face. That is a person who is, is present in my journey of life. What is a friend? A friend is a person who knows my name, my face and my heart there is some depth of commitment in that relationship. So think about it. Ask yourself, who is it who knows my name, knows my face, and actually knows what go what's going on in my heart? That is an indication that this person may be your friend, okay? And true friendship is, wh is what holds our business together. The other thing I'd like you to consider is this, what attracts you to different people? Why do you meet other people you're attracted to them and some you're not attracted to them at all? I would say that what attracts you to people is some, somebody who is pleasant or somebody who is useful or somebody who is good in themselves. You see, if somebody is pleasant, you can be attracted to, it, to them, but th that will not hold water as time goes on. Somebody who is useful, for example, a downline who generates a lot of PV, that is somebody useful. But if the only thing is utility, uh, they are going to sense that the only thing, the reason why you talk to them is because you think they're a PV machine. And that doesn't work. Somebody who is good in itself. L let me sh share three things that I think are very important in friendship. One is shared interest. Two is shared experience. Three is virtue, somebody who is virtuous, which means somebody who has got uh, good moral habits. 
There are three things that are very important traits in genuine friendship. Number one, good intention. Good intention simply means somebody who desires good for you. And what is good? Good simply means they want your life to be better today than it was yesterday. And they want your life to be better tomorrow than it was today. That is what good intention is. The second thing is willing to help to bring it about. You see, it doesn't matter, uh, it doesn't matter if uh, the person says has good intentions for you, but they're not willing to help bring it about. It's very easy to test whether somebody is a genuine friend or not. And the last thing is loyalty. That is why friendship takes time to build. It takes time to maintain. It requires virtue. That means it requires good moral habits for it to last. And the most important one of them is loyalty. Ask yourself this question. Would somebody come to you just by talking to you for 10 minutes and can say without doubt that I think you can make a good friend. Because it's uh, for one day, two days, people can actually pretend to be friends. But the true test of friendship is when things start getting, getting tough. When you've lost a loved one, when something happens to you and you need somebody to speak to, and you know that if you speak to this person, they are not going to broadcast what you discuss with them to the public. Those are very simple tests of friendship and that is a test of loyalty. So three traits that are very important for friendship, good intention, that means the desire for you to be a better person. Number two, willingness, willing to help bring it about. That means the person is ready to take time to help you become a better person. And the last one is loyalty. You see, there's something I would like to share with you uh, that give, I saw it and it really gave me some, uh, something to think about. You see that picture, a friend of mine sent me, uh, if you have never really lived until you have done something that nobody can repay you. I read this and I thought about it very many times. If you really want to know that uh, you, you have uh, provided good service to somebody else is you help them without expecting that they're going to give you something back. So think about uh, friendship. Think about what it is you consider important in your life. Genuine friendship is not easy to build. It takes time, it takes courage, it takes discipline, and it takes building of moral virtues. So I hope with uh, those a few thoughts you're going to think about how you're going to build friendship in your business, in your marriage. And the last thing is, before you sleep tonight, ask yourself a few questions. If you're married, have you been a genuine friend to your spouse? Have you been a genuine friend to your children? Have you been a genuine friend to your downlines or your sponsor? Is there something that you need to apologize for that you have done that had made somebody unhappy? Fred, I want to hand over back to you to close our meeting. So thank you all very much. I really appreciate your attention. And I hope some of these ideas we've shared with you are going to help you build a better and stronger business. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, uh, Pascal. Thank you so much, Betty. As usual, you have outdone yourself. Um, I like your training. It's very thorough, it's very in-depth. Uh, I always like saying it's very clear to see that uh, you're an engineer from your training. You, you don't need to be the church. <laughs> you, really, you really do a thorough job on any topic that you're given. And uh, you. I must say, I, I totally concur with uh, the sentiments you have shared. Uh, having been in the business for the last 24 years, I've come to realize at the end of the day, what matters is a friendship you create with your team. Um, people join you, they don't join the business. So sure. if you're a genuine friend, people will stick around with you. Uh, you won't have as many people leaving your business as you're getting them in. And at the long, in the long run, that is what matters because you want to build a residual income that will outlive you. So friendship is very, very critical. And I like the challenge of uh, being friends with our spouses. Sometimes we take them for granted. <laughs> 
<laughs> and our children. And uh, I mean, you'll take your friend out for a drink, but mama kai kwa nyumba oshe viombo, you know? And uh, that, that is wrong, that is wrong. Uh, we need to take our spouses out so that uh, we can have a drink together or even just go and have a, a meal together and really appreciate them for the tough work that they do. So I believe everybody on the call has benefited a lot, especially on the products and also on the business building skills. And uh, we are thankful. And um, I know that you are going to implement what you have learned. And um, make sure, I always say, whatever you have learned, don't keep it yourself. Get your Zoom together. Do a small Zoom meeting. I know Pascal gave us this tactic the other day, and we are playing it, and it's working for us. Organize your own Zoom meeting, small meeting, with your three distributors, five distributors, and teach them like Pascal has taught us, so that now we can be able to duplicate and, and grow our businesses. Don't just consume and then you get uh, information constipation. Uh, somebody said about WIG, wasteful information gathering, where you get information and you don't do anything with it. That will not help you. But if you take the information, get your team together, download with authority, they will That was a very, very good session. And it has given us the charge to go for another week to make sure that things happen. And remember the challenge you've been given by Pascal. If you are new, don't sleep without writing your 20 names and calling your sponsor to set up an appointment so that you can be able to tackle this. Action is a key. When you take action, you get results. Um, just talking about it, thinking about it, won't do much, but take action on what Pascal has shared. Others, thank you so much. Um, I wish to end the meeting there. It was great. Thank you, Pascal, as usual. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.